This is Brad from Black Magic Motorride. Uh, for this episode, I'll meet with Timmy Gross from the Brothers Gross and Terrell Fixes All on YouTube. Um, I've met some great musicians over the years, but we never get to talk as much as I'd like. I first met Timmy when we were in punk bands back in the early 2000s. So today I'll be traveling to DeMott, Indiana to take in some of the scenery, talk bikes, and revisit our history. <laughs> Kind of go way back to, to early 2000s. Yeah. Um, man, do you remember the first time we crossed paths? Uh, maybe rehearsal studios. Boy, is that Street Brats? Street Brats did one, and then there was one I think with uh, AGT played at uh, okay. rehearsal studios, and I think there was even like an other couple shows that went down there. That you guys might have played or we might have played probably at the same time. Yeah, you guys had a lot of fun around the City Water Bandits years. Oh, uh, they were pretty fun. Yeah. Just like, uh, just getting out finally, not playing just like around here, Valparaiso and stuff. Mm -hmm. Finally playing bigger cities, more like Chicago, more Indianapolis. Indianapolis seemed like it had a pretty good street punk scene for a while there. Yeah. So we were playing down there a lot with some good bands. So I remember when uh, City Water Bandits, you know, you guys were coming to a lot of Indianapolis shows, and I think around that time, um, it was really hard to tell who was from Indiana and who was from Chicago because yeah. it, you know there was uh, you guys and I think the downtown struts and stuff too, um, and then street rats started to come down and we started to see more of this um, like that scene. Yeah. Um, did you guys find that you were more? Like an Indianapolis group or a Chicago group? No, uh, I don't know. It seemed like we were hanging out in Chicago quite a bit, but Indy almost probably is equal, so we were bouncing back and forth between the two. But it seems like, yeah, maybe more on the Chicago side because it was a little bit closer. True. But yeah, we played a ton of shows down in Indianapolis. I'd probably say more than playing in Chicago. But what I always liked about you guys is that you seemed to be real people, like real dudes. Um, there, there wasn't like this persona that you guys were putting on or, or trying to act like rock and roll per se. Yeah. You were just being you. Yeah. How did you go from City Water Bandits to Brothers Gross? Uh, well, City Water Bandits broke up probably 2005, maybe. So then my brother had another band with kids that he went to high school with. So he was doing that band for a while. And then I was kind of like in a band in Muncie for a minute. But that didn't really work out. And then I was just floating around. So then after I graduated college and moved back here, me and Kyle started Brothers Gross. Like the end of 2007. And then we started playing out in 2008. So then we got back down to playing Indianapolis after we hadn't been there for probably three years. So kind of things have kind of changed. So we didn't really know uh -huh. who was like booking shows and who was yeah. still involved in the scene and stuff. So kind of had to get reacquainted with all that once we started playing out again. Because his band that he was in with his friends from high school never really played out a whole lot, mm -hmm. especially not really like Indianapolis or anything. So it was all new territory again. Oh, it was. I think, um, like in the early 2000s, it was easy to book a show. I oh, mean, yeah. They pretty much just came to you. Uh-huh. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. By the end of the 2000s, you know, things, it's yeah, definitely saw things changing. change. Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, it's called Brothers Gross because you guys are brothers, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we're extremely gross. And, you, and you're also <laughs> extremely gross? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Definitely not our last <laughs> name or anything. It's just that we're really disgusting people. Fair enough. Fair enough. Did you, have you guys um, always played together? I guess at what age did you guys start playing together? Yeah, we pretty much always played together. Uh, ever so we'd just be like banging around on buckets and stuff in the garage. And like my dad 
bought a bass guitar off some guy like on the streets one night in the summer and he brought that home so we were like all excited about that and my brother's just banging around on buckets and stuff this is probably when we were like when i was like 13 and he's four years younger than me so he's like nine <laughs> That's so crazy. he finally got a drum set the next year after that when he was 10 and I got an actual guitar and an amp and all that when I was 14. So then we started playing together like that. It's interesting. Was it, was it always, you were always interested in guitar and he was always interested no, in drums? No, he was doing singing for a while. Or actually, no, he was playing guitar and I was doing the singing, but I didn't really <laughs> care for the singing and he wasn't good at guitar. Okay. And we had another kid like beating on drums and he was terrible. So we switched that all up. So then we put we made that kid sing. Kyle went to drums and then I went to guitar. Because we learned that Kyle could keep like a beat and stuff and he was actually like pretty good with to, like making buckets sound pretty good. So we're like, alright, yeah, we'll just leave Kyle on that. <laughs> His multitasking abilities blow me away. Yeah. You know, the singing the yeah, he practiced a lot drums. for a while. Once I went to college, I think he was just in there playing drums a lot more because he had a lot more free time to do that. Yeah. Well, you're a heck of a guitar player yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's cool stuff. Years of experience, I guess. <laughs> it's pretty sloppy, but that's fun. Oh, that's the way it should be, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so about what age did you get into bikes? Uh, I've always been into bikes. Like, my dad's always been into motorcycles, so we always had, like, mini bikes and go-karts and stuff growing up. And my dad and his brother too have always been into motorcycles so they've always had bikes around and stuff I've been seeing them and then I never had money to buy my own so finally I moved back from Chicago and started saving some money and I was able to start buying bikes and I ended up with like 87 bikes yeah yeah at least 87 <laughs> you got a good collection yeah. pretty cool stuff you work with your dad and your brother on a, pretty much, yeah. a YouTube show right yeah okay tell Turtle me about fixes it fixes all yeah so we do comedy mixed with showing you how to do small engine repair. And we all play different characters and stuff and we have intros that we do before we do the fix and it's always like a funny story probably like based on like an actual story that's happened to one of us. But uh, we kind of like exaggerate everything to make it like over the top and funny. <laughs> but yeah, that seems to be doing really well. A lot of people on YouTube are liking it. We I enjoy it. I think it's of fun. Subscribers, yeah. So it keeps building and building. Do you have a favorite episode? No, oh, the Halloween ones are a lot of fun. Really? I like when we do those. We'll parody like horror movies and stuff. So I like making those a lot. They're a lot of fun every I, October. I think I saw Terrell as Leatherface. Oh yeah. That where he's yeah. kind of twirling uh -huh. around. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we had a little bit of that in there in one of the episodes earlier on. And you, you play a lot of characters, uh, what are some yeah. of your favorite characters that you've had? Uh, Slippers I love playing. Ronnie's probably my favorite one to play. He's like a little sleazeball kind of guy, always trying to like work a deal <laughs> or get one over on you and stuff. So it's pretty funny playing him. And uh, Uncle Andy is a good one because I see the real life Uncle Andy all the time, like daily at my job and stuff. So whenever I do a video, like parodying him, we're like, oh, check out what I did. It's usually like some story that he like, that happened like a day or two earlier. It's just based off an actual family member? So, well, yeah, a guy that hangs out at my uncle's shop. So we'll like take some story that we heard that he did or will do, and then we'll put it in a video. So it's like, oh, look what you did, and we're laughing at him. Funny, <laughs> over-exaggerated a little bit. That's awesome. <clears throat> but yeah, that's fun. Very cool. Getting the family involved. Well, yeah, uh, next, I'd, let's go take a look at your bikes. All right, let's see what we got. <laughs> Timmy, tell us about your bikes here. You got quite the collection. Oh, thanks, yeah. Well, I got mainly just 70s bikes because that's pretty much what I'm into. This is the first one that I got. 1978 Honda XR75. It was in a little rougher condition, but went through it, painted it all up, got it running, built the top end. Uh, I went to an auction uh, probably three years back, and they were 
selling a bunch of these little Harley Davidson Z90s. So I bought two of them and I turned one, I turned uh, two of the crappier ones into one good one. Uh, I just picked this up last summer in Portland, Indiana at the Vintage Motorbike Show. I've been looking for one of these for a while because I've seen a couple at an auction probably in 2015 and I was like, oh, those things are cool. I'd love to get one of those because you can ride on-road and off-road. It's got the fat tires on it. So I seen one in Portland and the guy wouldn't budge off 1500 bucks. So I'm like, oh man, I really want this. Come on, just take a little bit lower because it wouldn't start. We couldn't get it running. He's like, oh, it runs, it runs. I'm like, yeah, it's not starting now. <laughs> it was all gummed up. So I was like, all right, whatever. I really want it. So I paid him and then we went through the carburetor and the fuel shut off valve and got it running. Ah, little 100 Enduro. Got this in Portland too, the first year that we went there. It was in a lot rougher shape. I restored this one uh, like a couple winters back. You were uh, telling me earlier about some of the swap meets and things that you go to. Um, how are you picking up all these bikes? Uh, the swap meet that Portland, Indiana show is huge. There's just tons of people. So we just get on our mini bikes and motorcycles and just ride around the swap meet. Then I'll see something like, oh, that, that looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna go up and talk to this guy. So we've been going for like the last three or four years now. So every year I've been buying something there. This one I bought at Portland too. <laughs> awesome. This is one I've been trying to find for a while. I wanted a 175 Enduro, but I couldn't find one, and then I seen this street bike. So I was like, all right, awesome, perfect. I like the color, blue is my favorite color. It's perfect size, fast enough. It's not like super fast, but it's good for just cruising around back roads. Is this the people pleaser? Yeah. Like a lot of people like people this People like this bike a lot. Bought this little baby back in 76. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Seen it at a consignment shop in Hebron, the next town over. My dad actually did when he was driving by, so he's like, oh, you need to check that out. So on my way home from work, stopped in over there, and I was like, oh, that thing's pretty sweet. So why so many bikes? Yeah. Uh, I had another one that I just sold like a couple <laughs> months ago. It's like, yeah, I got too many. And I was tired of sinking money into it, but... At first, I got that I got this bike, and then I had that green Honda. So I was like, "All right, yeah, I got some bikes." And then this Yamaha came along for eighty-five dollars. So I was like, "All right, I can't beat that." And then we went to the auction, and these came up. I was like, "Oh, that's only like five hundred bucks for two of them." And then next thing I know, it's like, "Oh crap, I got all these bikes now." <laughs> so sold that Yamaha. Probably will sell this one next. Weed it down a little bit. Do you have any advice for anyone else who's looking to get into collecting motorcycles? Yeah, have some space. <laughs> and be prepared to work on this stuff a lot. Because a lot of stuff will pop up or go out. Not like a newer bike where everything runs a lot smoother. I am always tuning something up on these bikes, it seems like. Mm -hmm. But once it gets going, it's a lot of fun to ride. I really enjoyed today's episode. It was a pleasure to get to sit down with Timmy and talk about old times and look at old bikes. I really enjoyed riding through the marshes of Demont and I look forward to the next episode. Until next time, don't just wander, get lost. <laughs>